I thank the speaker. Well, it doesn't bring me pleasure to claim the time in opposition to my good friend from Missouri, and he knows how much I appreciate uh, the work he's done on this matter. Uh, the amendment is certainly, Mr. Speaker, well intentioned, but as currently drafted, I would argue, Mr. Speaker, that this language does more harm to consumers than good. Let me step back and say that unrelated to Mr. Clay's amendment, I introduced H.R. 4231, the Credit Access and Inclusion Act, which expands consumers' access to credit by allowing them to use their rent, utility, and telecom payments to help build their credit scores. In other words, and help more people have access to credit with those additional facts. As my friend noted, those additional data that we've heard in our FinTech Task Force, we've heard it in the Financial Services, Financial Institutions Committee, additional data allows million more, millions more to have access to the credit they need. This bill, the Credit Access and Inclusion Act, was introduced in the 114th Congress and the 115th Congress by my friend, Representative, former Representative Keith Ellison of Minnesota. I joined in the last Congress with him and co-sponsored it, and in the 116th, I've introduced it. So I find it interesting that in the last two Congresses, uh, my bill was the appropriate way to handle additional data, but in this Congress, it's not. Mr. Speaker, I'd also raise the point that there is a bipartisan, bipartisan Senate companion to my bill introduced by Senators Scott and Manchin. Furthermore, the language I've introduced was offered as an amendment to this bill by Gwen Moore, but was ruled out of order in the Rules Committee. As I've outlined, H.R. 4231, my legislation has strong bipartisan bicameral support. I believe Mr. Clay is trying to do something similar with the text he's offered today. But in my view, his version makes it more difficult for consumers to establish a credit history, which is underscored by the lack of bipartisan and bicameral support for this text. As drafted, Mr. Clay's amendment creates a new barrier because it requires written consumer authorization before furnishing a customer's payment information to a consumer reporting agency for a lease, for a utility, for a telecom service. And this is a stark contrast with how the current credit system, credit reporting methodology works. This amendment requires consumers to opt in to have their renting utility and telecommunication payments included in their credit reports. I believe that's a defective viewpoint. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. I, I just, uh, just in response, quick response to my friend from uh, Arkansas, be because some consumer advocates have expressed concern that consumers may be evaluated as higher risk for uh, for using alternative data than they would be uh, with no reports at all. We worked in, on this language to try to find the sweet spot. And my time. Can I ask how much time remains, Mr. Speaker? Two minutes. I thank my friend. Well, again, let me thank uh, Mr. Clay for his work on this. Requiring an opt-in and excluding data that would not allow lenders to get the full picture of a consumer's financial health, in my view, makes it more difficult for consumers to access credit because practically no rental, utility, or telecommunication companies would actually furnish the expanded access program. And therein lies the conundrum here. Therein lies the challenge with Mr. Clay's approach compared to my approach. But it doesn't stop me from thanking my friend for his work on this. I know it's an area that we share our interest in. We, I know that uh, he, this area keenly is important to him. However, this amendment, as it's currently drafted, I cannot uh, support it. I urge my colleagues to vote no, but I hope my colleague will be open to working together to finding a better solution that truly benefits consumers, expands additional data, allows people to offer these products because it will qualify more credit-needy Americans for um, credit, badly needed credit. And since I think Mr. Clay's approach, the perfect is the enemy of the good, I think we ought to work within the system that we have and make it better, and that's why I support 
my measure I've introduced in the House and oppose this amendment. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time.